right, while he's setting this up, I'll start. So hi everyone, I'm Eric Verdinas. I'm Cynthia Mai. Jeff Biscuit. And our project is called Advise. Marketing pioneer John Wanamaker said, half the money I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is, I don't know which half. Advertisers have always faced this problem. They want to show their ads, but they only want to show them to a small group of people. They don't want to have to pay for ads that are shown to people who are not interested. And this is called ad targeting. A study was published in 2012 that showed that advertisers who use ad targeting online spend four to five times less money than advertisers who do not use ad targeting. What this means is that advertisers pay for four out of five ads that are shown to the wrong people. Now, Google and Facebook have solved this problem by profiling their users and allowing advertisers to only pay for the ads that are shown to the right people. However, outdoor display ads and billboards don't really fall under this category. Once advertisers put them up around malls and, and bus stops or other areas, advertisers don't have the luxury of using Google AdSense. <clears throat> so in this example of the London Heathrow Airport in Terminal 5, Shiseido, which is a cosmetics and fragrances company, is taking out three huge advertisements in a crowd of mostly uninterested men. They're not even looking at it. It's kind of a waste of money. <laughs> so we believe that AdVise can eliminate this inefficiency and provide advertisers a way to track how well their offline ads are performing. So it all starts with the Microsoft Connect. This is the camera that we're using. The Connect can track up to seven people at a time, and we take pictures of people's faces every couple of seconds. We send these pictures off to a beta face, to beta face which is a facial recognition API. This API classifies each face with age and gender. We can also get back things like beard and glasses, but we're not using those currently. Once we get the data back, we create a probability distribution for each ad in our database. Now this shows us the likelihood that each ad will be shown to a particular person. So once we have age and gender, we can match the probability distributions with those, with those classifications. Finally, we rank the ads in order of probability, and we show the ad with the highest probable chance of being shown. Uh, once the ad is shown, we start to measure engagement with the ad. Now, Google and Facebook, they use page views and, and, and mouse clicks, but we call these artificial measurements of engagement. What we're doing is using head tracking. So we can actually time how long each person is looking at the ad, which we believe is a true measurement of how engaged someone is. The longer they look at it, the more interested they are. Uh, once we have all this data about head tracking, age, and gender, we can pump this back into our ad choosing algorithm to make it more accurate for future results. And I'll let Cynthia uh, explain more in detail how the whole process works. We use the Microsoft Connect as both a camera and a depth sensor in order to see when people can view AdVise. Once we see that people are in frame, we start taking pictures every few seconds. Then we actually crop out the faces and send them off to beta face. The reason why we crop these images instead of letting beta face find the faces for us is that we see a file reduction size of about 90%. This reduces in a dramatic decrease in the time it takes us to guess your age and gender from 20 seconds to around 3 seconds. Once we have these cropped images, what we do is we get rid of those which we, which we think will give us bad results. First, we eliminate blurry pictures. We do this by calculating the velocity of each face and the ones that are moving too quickly get removed. Then we remove the ones that are facing to the side because you can't see facial features that well. With these good images, we start taking a weighted average of both your age and gender as images come in. The more images we have about you, the more confident we are about your characteristics. And then once we have a general idea of who you are, we start targeting ads specifically toward you. Now Jeff will explain exactly how we choose which ads to show. We currently choose an ad based off of two features, age and gender. For each ad, there's an upper and a lower bound set by the advertiser based off of your age. We create a Gaussian distribution with each, with each of these bounds one standard deviation away from the average target age range. From this distribution, we can determine the probability that an ad should be shown to any particular person. As we track user engagement with the display, we automatically shift this distribution to reflect real consumer preferences. We call this auto-targeting. This allows us to show ads to people that will respond best to them and it saves advertisers time from having to tweak their ads. If an advertiser doesn't want us to auto-target, they can turn this feature off. Once we have the likelihood for each ad to be shown, we arrange them in an order based off of probability. Now, this is not necessarily an absolute rank. We introduce a little bit of randomness into our system in order to get variability in our consumer data. If the user faces the ad for a long time, we increase the chance that another user of the same demographic will see these, this ad in the future. Here's a flowchart of how Advise chooses which ad to show. If we detect one person standing in front of the display, we first determine their age and gender. For a 45 to 53 year old male, we calculate the probability distributions for each ad in the database. 
This is the probability that that ad will be shown to that person. Finally, we choose an ad with a high probability to show. For a 22 to 30 year old female, we do the exact same thing and come up with maybe like an ad for Sephora. If we detect a group of people on the display, we calculate the ages and genders of everybody, up to seven people, and find the biggest cluster of demographics in that group. So if the group is a, um, a group of males and females at about age 30, um, we'll to choose an ad that's almost like gender neutral, like Toyota, that will appeal to a large range of people. However, if the group is a group of males, like uh, between ages 16 and 55, which is a large age range, we'll find an ad that appeals to only males for a large age range. Uh, now we're gonna go through a demo right now and uh, see if it works. Okay, so as you can see, uh, on the display and on the display up here, Cynthia's been standing in front of AdVise and it's showing her female ads. You've seen J. Crew, Ann Taylor. Um, if she wants to change the size or style of the clothing, she can swipe left and right. Um, this also triggers an engagement for us, so we know that she's really engaged if she's trying to dig deeper into the advertisement. Uh, but now if Jeff shows up, um, you'll see that uh, the ad will only be showing male-oriented ads. Um, so once the ad switches, um, we'll get you know, another Abercrombie pitch. Maybe the next one will be Tommy Hilfiger or something along those lines. Um, and he can also switch left and right if he wants to see you know, different versions of the ad, different styles, different clothing options. Uh, so this is what the consumer would see. You're walking around, uh, you see these ads switching. You don't really know that anything's happening in the background, but you happen to be seeing ads that are more targeted. If we guess wrong, there's really no downside because putting up a random ad can't be any worse than what we're doing, but we found that we're pretty much right every time. Um, now, this is what the advertiser would see. <clears throat> so this is for the advertiser or the display owner only. Um, on the bottom, you can see the video stream from the Connect, and above Jeff's head is a little information card. It says that he's about 28 to 36, which for an advertiser, even though it's not perfectly correct, it's at least in the ballpark of where they would want to show their ad. Um, you can also see that there's a little timer underneath, uh, right above his head. As he's looking at the ad, the timer is picking up. This is how long he's been facing the camera, and facing the ad. If he were to look away, the timer would, would stop. So we are actually timing how long people are looking at the ad using head tracking. Um, above, the, above the video stream, you can see a couple of charts. These are our analytics that we're giving back to the advertisers and back to the display owners. Uh, one chart shows um, how engaged people have been, separated by age. Uh, another chart shows the total male-to-female ratio of who's been walking in front of the display that day. And finally, there's a chart that shows the total number of ages of people who've been walking in front of the display. So what this is uh, for is like if a display owner wants to know uh, kind of ca being able to categorize the foot traffic, foot traffic of where of the people walking around, they'll know generally what ages and what genders are walking in front of the display, and they can charge for advertisements accordingly. Um, so we believe that for advertisers, this data would be invaluable in choosing the correct ads and in targeting the correct, the right demographics without having to overpay and overspend like they're currently doing. Um, so we believe that um, we believe that that uh, advice can be used in a, in a variety of situations. Uh, this can be malls, airports, bus stops, even taxis or, or elevators. All these places already have advertisements, but I'm sure you guys have noticed most of them are completely irrelevant. Um, we're aiming to change this. We think it's better for consumers because they only see products that they might want to buy. It's better for advertisers because it saves them time and money, and our auto-targeting makes sure that they're only seeing the right ads at the right time. So all in all, no one's ever created a system like this. Everyone's seen Minority Report or Back to the Future. We know that this is going to happen, but there's no system that's currently in place that does this. Um, outdoor display advertising really hasn't evolved in 100 years, and we believe that AdVise can change this. Thank you. So, let me understand what you would do with this. You would set these things up in some key location to get the data? Yeah, so this would be a kiosk in a mall or a bus stop, something like that. And how much, I, I guess my question is, how much data do you think you would have to compile before you could go convince Toyota, for example, that you had enough information so that they could make a commitment to this? So we would start with smaller companies that are willing to take a little bit more risk. And what we would do is we would, you know, they would have a very specific age range or gender target that they want to show. And we'll show that um, over time, if they were to put it completely randomly, we'll show them how many seconds their target has been looking at the ad, versus if we turn on targeting, now we're gonna show them that, um, that more seconds have been accumulated of people looking at their ad from their target you know, demographic. And once we have these proven statistics, 
we can take it to larger companies like Toyota or Sephora, Old Spice, and companies like that. How long um, after you've taken a picture or several pictures or you've got, how long do you retain that image oh. of that individual? Yeah, um, so there's a lot of privacy concerns involved with this, uh, putting this out in public, things like that. People don't necessarily like cameras that much. So what we're doing is we're throwing away all the data once we use it. All we're saving is uh, anonymous demographic data, so your age, your gender. Uh, we also save if you have facial hair, if you have glasses, things like that. So you know maybe someone like Gillette could come in and be like, uh, if somebody has a beard, maybe we should show them a new razor or something. So it's all it's all thrown away, at least most of it. Um, what specific like considerations are taken into account when you're using Betaface to analyze someone's face? Like what factors do you use to determine someone's age? It's basically the proportions of your face. So younger people have bigger eyes compared to the rest of their face, or their head is bigger to their body. Um, but we're not doing any of the facial recognition ourselves. Um, so it's basically your bone structure, your eyes, and obviously um, like the roundness of your face. You uh, pre-process your images by cropping to the face. How do you do that? Is that an inherent part of the Connect API? Or? Yeah, so the Connect API uh, does skeletal tracking. And from where the position of the body is, we can guess where the face is. So we take the full picture and we say, okay, well, if we know the body's in this location at these coordinates, we can guess where the face is and we take a little box around that face and eliminate the rest of the picture. So that's part of your algorithm. Well, we're doing the cropping, the connect is giving us where the skeleton is. So the incentive is that they can charge a lot more for advertising. Um, someone puts up a poster, it's obviously a piece of paper you throw up, it's not that expensive. But in a lot of these pictures, you can see that the displays are already digital, and that's where the industry is moving. So adding a camera and an internet connection, or even we can even do it locally, um, it's really not that much of an expense to make this system work. And you don't necessarily have to buy the display. Our system is really just the camera, the display is just here so we can Yeah, so, so we actually we do take privacy really, um, really seriously. We don't want to collect any more information than we need. Um, so where we draw the line is any information that's outwardly visible is information that we think it's okay to analyze. So if you're walking around looking like a male, we think it's okay to, you know, to figure out that you're a male. We're not going to tie that to your Facebook or anything else, your Wi-Fi, your phone. We're not going to do anything like that, just your outward appearance. Thank you very much.